I'm Miss Quiring and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Westfield Charter Academy. Today is our last day together doing our virtual read aloud lessons. So congratulations on making it this far. Before we get to our very last book of the year, let's review our last skills. So the first one that I want to review is our story elements. So since it is our last time doing this skill together, I'm going to ask you what each letter means and what each word means, because I think you can do it. In our story, we have S-T-O-R-Y. Let's start with our S. S stands for setting, good. And what is a setting? Yeah, a setting is where and when our story happens. Well done. Take a look at your T. What does T stand for? Yeah, T stands for talking characters. And remind me, who can be a character? Yeah, people, animals, or objects. Well done. Next up we have O. What does O stand for? Yeah, O stands for, oops, a problem. And what is a problem? Yeah, a problem is when the character really wants something, but can't have it. Our R is attempts to resolve. We have not worked on that in kindergarten, so we're gonna skip to Y. What does Y stand for in our story chart? Yes, Y stands for yes, a solution. And lastly, remind me, what is a solution? A solution is how the problem gets fixed. Awesome work. And next up is our brand new skill. Our new skill this week is identifying a lesson. So can you remind me what is a lesson? You can use your hand movements to help you if you need. Yeah, a lesson is what we learn from a story to make us better. Well done. When we wanna find a lesson in a story, we know there are two things we have to look for. What's the first thing we have to ask ourselves? Yeah, we need to stop and ask ourselves, how does the character change? After we figure out the changes, what's the second question we ask ourselves? Yeah, next we have to ask ourselves, what did the characters learn? And very last, why do we wanna learn about lessons in a story? Why is that important? Yeah. Good readers identify the lesson to better understand the big idea in our story. Well done. As we read today again, whoops, we are going to be charting our lesson. We have to look at what the characters change about themselves, what they learn, and again, we're gonna fill in our story chart as we read too. Today's book is one of my favorite books, so I'm so excited to read it with you. The title of that book is The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. And remind me one last time, what two skills are we gonna work on while we read our book today? Awesome, we are gonna work on our story elements and we are gonna work on our lesson, identifying some changes and what our characters learned. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish, not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. And I can see some of my sparkling scales there. 
Now, just like we've been doing, I need to stop and think about my skills when I'm reading. So I know that I'm looking for my lessons, but because I'm just introduced to some of our characters, I don't know enough about them yet to see the changes, but I can add to my story chart. So I'll start us off today doing our setting. My text told me that a long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. That gives me a hint about where our story is happening. I'm going to say the setting of our story is in the deep blue sea. And I'm gonna say it's daytime because again, my illustration shows a really bright picture that usually is bright in the day. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him rainbow fish. Come on, rainbow fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They're so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? Cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset that he told all his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. Now I need some of your help. As I'm filling out my story chart, I know T stands for talking characters. So far in my story, who are the talking characters? Yeah, there are a few already. We have the rainbow fish. We have the little blue fish. And we have the other fish that are in the deep blue sea too. What good were dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go deep beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. Now, we have us, we have our setting, we have T, we have our talking characters. Now I need to find my O, my oops A problem. What do you hear the rainbow fish saying that he wants, but can't have? Take a minute to turn and talk or to think by yourself, what is the rainbow fish's problem? Yeah. His problem is that he wants others to see how beautiful his skills are, but nobody will see them. He was very mean, and so now nobody looks at him. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside, and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly, two eyes caught him in their glare, and an octopus emerged from the darkness. I've been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales? Pfft, never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt a light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. 
Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and he gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you so much. The little blue fish bobbed playfully as he tucked the shiny scale among his blue ones. A rather odd feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. Now I'm gonna stop here because I've been adding a lot to our story chart, but I've yet to add anything about my characters changing to learn a lesson. But I'm thinking out loud here and I'm remembering that our rainbow fish said, I'm never gonna give any of my scales away. How could I ever give a beautiful scale away, right? But what just happened on this page? Yeah, we see our rainbow fish giving a shimmery scale away. Does that seem like him or did he change? I agree, I think he changed. So I'm gonna add to our chart. I'm going to say he is thinking about giving his scales away. That's a big change for our rainbow fish. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by others. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right. And the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Now I'm gonna stop here and ask you what you think. What other changes do you see in the rainbow fish? We said that first he's thinking about giving some scales away. Now, what character actions do you see the rainbow fish taking now that's showing a change? Yeah, it's pretty similar to what we already had up there. We said he was thinking about giving some of his away. And now it says that he feels at home and he gave many of his scales away. So instead of feeling excluded like he's on the outside, he feels like he's a part of the deep blue ocean now. And he's giving all of his scales away. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. The end. Now, as I'm thinking about my book, The Rainbow Fish, I want to think about a couple different things. The first thing I want to think about is our story chart. We have our setting, our talking characters, our oops, a problem. But I notice I don't have my why filled in yet. I don't have a yes, a solution. We said our problem was the rainbow fish wants others to see his scales, but nobody will look. How did our rainbow fish solve his big problem in our story today? Take a minute to think about it and you can turn and talk if you would like to discuss how did he fix his problem? Yeah, I think I hear it. The rainbow fish solved his problem by giving away his shiny scales to everyone. He shared his scales and then everybody could see them because they were on everybody. He solved his problem. Next, I wanna look at our lesson. So when we find a lesson, we have to look at the changes and what the character learned. So we notice that the rainbow fish started to change first by thinking he might give some scales away, and then second, by actually giving all of his scales away and feeling more at home. Now that we know that, I want you to think, what did the rainbow fish learn by giving his scales away? What lesson do you think he learned? Yeah, there might be a couple different ways to say this, but I said 
the lesson that a rainbow fish learned is that it's more important to share and to have friends than to be selfish and lonely. By the end of our book, I can look at my picture of the rainbow fish and see his smile. He's happy and he's playing with his friends. So even though, like the octopus said, he's not the most beautiful anymore, but he is so happy and he's no longer lonely. And remember, a lesson is what we learn from the story to help us be better. So even though we're not a fish in the ocean, we can still learn that if we want to have friends and feel happy, that we should share things with them instead of being selfish. So with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for joining me this summer for our ELA video read alouds. I hope you all have a wonderful summer. Stay safe and stay healthy. And we are all looking forward to having you back next year. Bye.